Hi everybody! Welcome to my next video. This is going to be an unveiling, an opening of the next month in the Tumbling Cosmos block of the month. So this is for Tumbling Cosmos. If you're working on this <clears throat> pattern, I chose to do a block of the month. So I get new fabric every two months, which gives me two months to put that section together. It'll be a one year block of the month with six sections. So yeah, let's dive into this. So I have posted a few videos on my process for making this quilt. I'm almost done. I'm so close to done. The top left section, not quite done yet, but I wanted to get into this package. It's been staring at me for two days. I couldn't wait any longer. Look at all the pretty fabric. So we're just going to flip through it real quick. Not a, um, you know, not really a tutorial video here, but I'll show you a little bit. I had shown it in another video, my storage for this quilt as well. So I'll show you that. And I will have a video posted soon. I'm doing my block of the month in rows of two. And then I'm gonna have a video posted soon of how I attach those rows together. And then of course I'll do another video of uh, how I based all these and how I'm sorting everything and whatnot. So that's kind of cool. So let's see, we got some goodies in here. So, oh, this is cool. So this is a little gift from the company that I did the block of the month with. And it's a little stitch per inch. So if you want 30 stitches per inch, let's see, can I read it on this? I don't have my glasses, so. Looks like 16, 14, that's pretty cool. Oh, you gotta read it this way, that's why. I was trying to read it backwards. Uh, 16, 14, 18, and 20, 20, okay. So you can hold this up to your English paper piecing and get an idea. I'm more in like the 14 stitches per inch uh, range, maybe 16. I think that's more than enough, but that's kind of cool. I've never even seen one of those before, so I'll have to pull out. Oh, maybe I actually have my one I've done here. Let's see if we can hold it up and see see where I'm at. Oh, let's see. Ooh, definitely not 20. <laughs> oh, I can't see my stitches real well. Oh, this one I can see them. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Definitely more in that 14 or 16. I think that's plenty. You don't need to go overboard on your stitches. I think people do too many stitches sometimes because you're afraid it's going to fall apart. But trust me, hand stitching will last just as well as machine stitching. Remember, they were making quilts well before the sewing machine was invented. And those quilts were used quite often. They used them for warmth and all of that. So they hold up well. Then I also get two glue sticks in there. And then just a list of all the fabrics also comes with it. So it's kind of cool. So let's see what we got for fabrics. Ooh, so we have a lot of this pink and orange. So that obviously gets used quite a lot in there. And then, oh, these are upside down. Do I have my stack upside down? Oh, I do have my stack upside down. Oh, look at that. So these are all, let's see, this is a width of fabric. So all of these ones are the whole width of fabric. So it looks like I got four of those. Oh, five of those, that purple too. There we go, yep, five of those. So those obviously have a lot of pieces in this section. And then we have half of a width of fabric, so quite a few of those. I need this one for my section I'm working on right now. I accidentally cut my stripes wrong like 30 times and ran out of fabric, so I need one piece of that to finish off this side, which is pretty funny. You can see, actually, I'll show you. That's hilarious. Right here, I have a hole in my fabric because that's where that needs to go. So I gotta cut one of those to finish that off. And we'll see, I'll, maybe I'll do a little video of uh, cutting that in or sewing that in because I don't even know how I'm gonna do it. But look at all these pretty fabrics. This is all Tula Pink fabric. It's so pretty. This is my second block of the month with Tula Pink. And actually the Queen of Diamonds was my first one. And it was the first time I ever owned a stitch of Tula Pink in my life. And 
Honestly, I am so in love. I don't know if I'll ever go back to any other fabric, to be honest. I just, I love all her vibrant colors and everything. And then we have a quarter width of fabric. So these are all the pieces that just have a few, probably one or two <coughs> diamonds in there. Sorry. But look at all these beautiful, beautiful colors. I love it. So I'm choosing to stick to the pattern as closely as possible. I'm looking at it like I'm doing a puzzle. I know some people are using their own fabrics and swapping in different fabrics, which is absolutely an option. Remember, quilting is your own. You can do it any way you want. So you can take a pattern and make it all your own, or you can take a pattern and follow it exactly. There's no rules, no rhyme or reason. Um, but I know that Tula worked on this particular quilt for years. She would move one piece here, one piece there, decide that that one didn't quite fit, change out the fabric on that one. And honestly, she did so much work on making it all work. I figured I would honor that by doing her design exactly. And that's my choice. So look at all these pretty fabrics though. So cool. Oh, I can't wait to get to basting. I think basting is probably my favorite part of doing English paper piecing. So this is all for the top middle section. And <clears throat> if you've watched some of my other videos on this quilt, which there is a whole playlist, so you might wanna go back and watch that if you haven't seen it yet. I have actually started already basting and cutting the other sections with the fabrics that I got from the first section. So what I'm trying to do is basically fulfill as much as I can in the entire quilt with the fabric that I get for each section. And it kind of worked out where I'll, I did quite a bit in the top center, which are these fabrics, because the way she does the quilts, they kind of blend over to that section, whereas the bottom part, I didn't really get too many because those colors are all different on the bottom part. They're more blues than pinks and purples. And obviously you can see there's a lot of pinks and purples. So I actually have quite a bit already basted and cut for the top center section. And so what my project's going to be is to figure out what I need additionally and then what else I need for the rest of the quilt. So let me set this aside. Let me show you kind of how I'm organizing everything. So somebody in one of the Facebook groups I was in, let me tilt this up so you can see it better, had suggested this box. This is a four by six photo box. So when you pull these out, they actually fit four by six photos, but they're great for organizing the projects. And so what I have been doing is having two sections in here at a time. So I was working on the top left section. So that's what was in here. It's empty now because I am actually almost done. This is missing here because that's the, the part I'm, the rows I'm working on. But the top center section, which is the fabric I just got, I have over here. So these are the pieces that I've already been able to baste from the fabric I got for the top left. And so what I've been doing is basically putting two rows in each box because I'm sewing my sections by two rows at a time. So I got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, and then you can see it's top center here. So once I'm completely done the section, which should be pretty soon, these will move over here and then I'll do a, the set of boxes that will now be empty for my top right section and put in all of the pieces that I was able to baste for that. And I just have them in baggies right now because there's not nearly as many. So this is the top right section. So this will now become the ones here. And then when I get the fabrics for that, I'll organize those. So that's kind of how I've been doing this. And um, I've been, let's see, clipping my pieces that I, so when I have all three pieces, I've been clipping them together. I ran out of clips, so most of these in this side aren't clipped yet. But once I can use the clips from this, they'll all get clipped. And I, the way I've been labeling them, I, you can see that in a video is, so this is the block number and then right, left and top. So you can see that I have a whole basting video. You can see that all there, but <clears throat> just wanted to quickly go over that in this video too, of how I'm organizing it all. You know, the big thing about this quilt is organization, organization, organization. The actual pattern itself, the tumbling block and even the special blocks are truly not that difficult for English paper piecing. If you were doing them any color, you would be doing, it would be so easy. Uh, the hard part about this quilt is keeping everything organized and trying to, if you're trying to 
get that same color wash that she does. So this is the quilt itself. So she has this rainbow color wash is trying to keep that all organized. There's over 150 different fabrics in this quilt, which is crazy. So trying to keep that all organized <coughs> is the hardest part of this quilt. So that's why I like this. I don't usually use big boxes. I like the bags that I just showed you. So usually all my projects go in bags like this. I prefer that but it just made more sense to have the boxes where I could clip them together and have it all organized. So that's what I did for this one. Uh, but I'll just quickly show, I'm just gonna show a little bit. Obviously you wanna buy this pattern if you wanna make this quilt. So I don't wanna show too much of it, but <coughs> you can see like A7, I have little dots. That means I've already basted and cut out this, these all three fabrics for this block. And so what I'm gonna do when I get started, which I will do a video on, so there'll be ones like down here that don't have a dot. And so I have to go through and figure out which ones have not been cut yet and which ones don't have dots and figure that out. And then once I <clears throat> get the top center completely covered, I'll use the extra fabric to continue trying to cut out for other sections so that hopefully I end up with a good amount of fabric in the end that's left over that I can use for other projects, which would be great. So that's the game plan. These are our pretty fabrics. Let me, I gotta show these off again. These are so pretty, so pretty. So if you're liking my videos, please let me know in the comments below. It really encourages me to keep making them. I really don't, I truly don't make any money off of these videos. Maybe one day uh, if I get enough subscribers, but that's certainly not the goal for me. The goal is actually to make a different kind of tutorial. I probably will never fit into uh, YouTube's algorithm, uh, but the people who like these types of videos, I hope they really help you because I like the longer format videos where I'm actually seeing how somebody's stitches or seeing their thought process or seeing all the steps because I feel like nowadays the tendency is to try to go really quick 30 second videos let's do this quick and you're not really seeing anything and every time I watch it I'm like but I want to see how you stitch that I want to see how you basted that so I try to include bits and I don't do everything obviously it's hard to record all of my steps all the time, but I do try to include some stitching and some basting and my thought process behind everything. So I really hope that you do enjoy my videos and that that process works for you as well. And if it's not your cup of tea, I'm sure there's other videos out there that are much shorter than mine. I'm very long winded. So <laughs> and I absolutely appreciate all of you watching and those of you that have commented thanking me or asking questions. I truly appreciate that as well. I've actually been keeping a list of comments and questions and things that you guys want to see so hopefully I'll be making some other videos that will cover all that like I know one was uh, seeing a video where I take out the papers so we'll make sure that we do that somebody a couple people asked about my light box so I'll go over that in a video I do have a uh, did I talk? No, I didn't talk about that in my travel video. Yeah, so I haven't talked about my light box at all. So I'll do a video just for that and other things like that. So all of your comments and stuff are definitely appreciated and listened to and will someday hopefully become a video, which will be fun. So here we go. So top center section, round two of Tumbling Cosmos. We're working on month three and four. Can't believe we're already a third of the way in, <laughs> which seems weird. So yeah. Hopefully um, you got your fabrics in, or if you're working from your own stash, let me know. I'm interested to see what everybody that watches these videos is doing. And I hope you liked this video. I know it was more of just a show and tell video, but I should have some more how to's and stuff up on this quilt uh, for, you know, shortly, but make sure you subscribe, <clears throat> like this video, subscribe to my channel. I think when you subscribe, there's some options for different notification settings. So if you wanna make sure you're alerted for all of my videos, make sure you tell YouTube that. I do post pretty sporadically because like I said, I don't get paid for this, which is awesome. I don't care because it's my hobby and I just like sharing with you guys. I used to wanna be a teacher, never worked out in my life to become a teacher. So this kind of fills that teacher role for me, which is a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, so I, I only post sporadically. So if you subscribe to the channel, uh, YouTube will tell you when I have a new one up. And yeah, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye everybody.